Today on Hands On Photography, I'm going to get on a skateboard. No, I'm not getting on a skateboard. <laughs> but I actually am going to talk to an awesome skate photographer, Canon Explorer of Light, Mr. Ativa Jefferson. And he's going to walk us through some tips and tricks just in case you're out and about at the skate park uh, wanting to shoot some photographs as well as share his experience from the, the recent Olympics and the Canon R3. Y'all don't want to miss it. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. As you already know, this is a show where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor because yes, they go hand in hand. And from time to time, I get the honor and, and, and glorious opportunities to sit down with some amazing photographers uh, just to go through some of those tips and tricks. And today is one of those days. But before we get into that, I want to just say one more thing to you folks that are popping in for the first time. Go ahead and hit subscribe and whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on, uh, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Pocket Cast or even YouTube. Just go ahead and subscribe. And then if your podcast application allows you to do a bit of a rating or a review, make sure to leave me a rating or a review. That way it'll help push the show up in the search engine stuff, you know, all of that algorithmic magic stuff that I don't quite understand. But yeah, it'll, it'll supposedly to help push us up and get more people uh, in front of the show so we can help grow this hands on photography community. Or if you can't quite figure that all out, just go to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash HOP for hands on photography, where you see all of our subscription options there as well as our previous episodes and show notes and all of the tips and tricks that these wonderful photographers have shared with me and our listeners. All right, with that out of the way, let me go ahead and bring on today's guest. I am sitting down today with the amazing Canon Explorer of Light who has been shooting skate skateboarding. He's been shooting musicians. He's been shooting athletes. I believe he's actually uh, on the staff uh, the staff photographer to Los Angeles Lakers. I'm sure he's going to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I'm not. <laughs> I did work for them for uh, three years and I still work for them. Still uh, works for them. Yes. Yeah. I <laughs> shot media day for them. I just shot a game the other night for Slam Magazine. So I kind of go back and forth between doing a lot of basketball stuff for either Slam or the NBA slash the Lakers. And I'll do some Clippers stuff too, but yes, I work for them regularly, but not. Um, but he's not the staff. <laughs> he's he's the hired gun, if you will, yeah. down there in LA Great area. Relationship and the Lakers will always be family. And Andy Bernstein, the team photographer, that's who I worked for, and and, and we still work next to each other. So yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good relationship. But that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, folks, this is the awesome Atiba Jefferson. How you doing, my man? I'm good. It's uh, raining in L.A., which is very rare. Wait, 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 what? In L.A.? Uh, <laughs> full day of it, too. So you <laughs> caught me on a good day. I was able to be at home. Oh, my goodness. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. I wanted to bring you on and, and talk a little bit about your favorite go to tips uh, regarding the world of photography, um, pointing more so towards the, the skateboarding side of things like here in California, we've been dealing with a lot of lockdown stuff and people have not necessarily been able to get out and shoot things in public, but we are slowly starting to open things back up. So you'll see people out and about at the parks and riding their bikes and things of that nature, or you'll see people heading out to the skate parks with their scooters and skateboards and things of that nature. And I th I've always thought it would be kind of fun myself to shoot skateboarding, but I can't say I'm really good at it because it's a lot of things that I just don't I, I just don't quite know about the sport. I assume it's all about getting the shot that's up in the air and, and or something spinning and things of that nature. But if I was to look at your portfolio, I would see that there is a myriad of a myriad of things regarding the world of skate photography. Uh, it's not just those 
those steel shots caught caught up in the air. Or it's, it's it's a whole lot of different things. Sometimes it's just an image of the person. Uh, just looking deep into their eyes or just looking at the gear that they're using at the time. But um, yeah, first, tell us a little bit about where, where you're from and some of the things that you've done in the past. And how exactly did you even get into shooting skate photography? Because I'm just going to be honest with you, where I'm from, the Carolinas, we didn't see a lot of black folks in the skate world. We just... Yeah, it, it's funny. I, I um, my sister and um, niece and nephew um, I live in Durham, so I've done. Oh, uh, yeah, you know all about it then. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, um, my sister is black, as a, so is myself, and uh, yeah, it's really cool. Both both my niece niece and nephew are really into skateboarding, so you know, I I think it's a different time now, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, skateboarding is uh, something that is grown in the black community and is great. You know, me, I'm, I'm older, I'm 45. So, you know, I started skating in 1989. And yes, I was definitely one of the few black skaters in our town, but not the only one, you Mm -hmm. know, skateboarding comes from the street, you know, once, once it got outside of the ramps and stuff, and it became a street thing, it was really common for, to see people of all colors, uh, you know, doing it. And that's what's great, especially in the inner cities, um, you know, and then obviously once the mainstream got a hold of it, and then once you started, you know, once you were able to see other black pro skaters Mm -hmm. do it, Kareem Campbell, Ray Barbie, then, you know, anyone who is black was like, oh, they're doing it. I can do it, you right, know, right. And that inspired. And then things on TV, you got people like Pharrell or Little Wayne skateboarding. And then that brings it to a whole nother audience. And skate yeah. culture is street culture. So it's already influenced so many things in fashion. You got Virgin Abloh's, the Louis Vuitton headman's designer who made a skate shoe happen on Louis Vuitton. So now it's everywhere. And I think it's a great thing because, you know, it's being, you know, done by people of color and that's hopefully inspiring other people of color. Um, I just uh, earlier, a couple months ago, um, worked on a special that's on ESPN Plus, and that is about the black experience in skateboarding. Oh, and nice. Of it. And it's just one part of it. You know, also a year ago, we did a whole issue of Thrasher magazine um, dedicated to black skateboarding, too. So, you know, it's a conversation that we celebrate a lot in skateboarding because we know that black skateboarding had brought in a lot of different style to skateboarding that was predominantly white when it started. So, you know, it, it's cool for me to be someone was able to contribute to that story. Now, is all about everybody, gender, race, everybody's included. That's that's what I always loved about skateboarding. It, it, from the beginning, when I started, it was never about what you look like. It was about what you did on the skateboard. What you did on the board. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, with that said, you you, you clearly have a passion for it, but you're also an artist. I've read that you've you've been into music and, and played some piano here and there. Um, mm-hmm. But now you have cameras in your hand. What what was it that led you to start snapping images of, of, of skating? Or was it somebody that that was in your crew that said, hey, I need some shots. Can you got a camera? Can you take some shots of me? There was a friend of mine. Um, his name is Josh Wildman, who was a really cool photographer and I, he was a skater. But, you know, for me, we always looked at magazines, right? So mm-hmm. my room covered with pages of Thrasher magazine. My dad got me a subscription when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So skateboarding photos were, you know, what kind of social media is, right? Right. We just studied them. We looked at them, you know, as much as we look at our phone to look at Instagram is what we did with the magazine. Mm-hmm. So I always had this attraction and... You know, I just wasn't that good of a skater. So I knew that having a camera would keep me involved and keep me motivated and keep me stoked. So, you know, it was one of those kind of things where honestly, like it was just um, 
something that once I tried it once and, and once I saw, you know, these things come to life in a dark room, these images come to life. Mm -hmm. I, I was hooked on it. I just, you know, it's like anything you love. You can't really describe it. It's a feeling. It's just like once I started it, I couldn't stop. And I, I'm still, you know, have that same feeling every time I am able to pick up a camera. And oh, I love that. That's that's just flat out love right there. Every time you pick it up, you still feel the juices firing. Every time you pick up a camera, even today, two decades yeah, later, yeah. right? And there's a picture I posted yesterday and I'm just like, I see this vision. I see these lines and, you know, still <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now, when I look at skate photography, I figured, okay, maybe I should try to approach this like street photography, if you will. Just go out there to the park and make sure I'm visible because I don't want to look like the creepy person out there with a camera. But I figure go out to the park and just sort of make eye contact and try to engage, if you will, just to try to keep the skaters comfortable and let them know, hey, just have some fun. I'm over here. I'm just trying to capture what you're going to do and, and hopefully make you look good when I do it. Um, what is your approach on that? Or when you when you started it shooting skate photography, was your approach the same then as it is now as far as just what to capture, when to capture? And I know things have upgraded uh, for, for years because you got more speed lights and things like that when you're shooting here and there. I, I would say like, you know, for me, I, I grew up in a different time. I was in a circle of skateboarders. So I just picked up the camera, mm -hmm. leaned together, and I just shot. Now, like if I was someone like you, the one thing that a lot of people don't know is like, people can get very distracted uh -huh. from other people they don't know, like pointing a camera at them. Okay. So That's good to know. I would sit back, watch for like a half hour, see who's ripping the hardest and be like, hey, can I take your picture? You know, mm -hmm. some might say no, some might say yes. I right. mean, you can always kind of get along lens and just poach, you're probably fine. It's a public place. But, you know, I, I think the one thing that I would do is be like, hey, can I take this picture? I'll send it to you. I won't use it for anything. Right. Right. You know, media or whatever. Right. Um, you know, and, and probably in a small town, most of the skaters are going to be stoked. In LA, <laughs> probably running into pro skaters who are like, no, nah, I don't want you to just use my photo. But, you know, in the small towns, I'm sure you'd be okay. Right. So you know, it's just like, and then that way you make that connection. You could actually communicate what, what they're going to do. And they can tell you, especially if you don't really know skateboarding, mm -hmm. you'll want them to go, Hey, uh, what would be something cool? You know, and then they could go, Hey, I'm going to go, from, you know, I'm going to do a front side ollie and go from here to there. And mm -hmm. then you be right there. Like if you don't know skating, because right. if you know skating and you're a skater, you've already been around skateboarders you're going to know how to have that conversation. But if you're not a skater, you know, that's a different situation. Okay. Now that makes perfect sense because I think about when I shoot um, football games, uh, I shoot in the high schools here every now and then, but it's so much easier for me because I know football and yeah. I, I know down and distance and, and all of that. And I've almost learned the offense. So <laughs> So I, I pretty much know where to go uh, yeah. before the time happens. And it really does help get that well, shot that, framed up for me. Yeah, that, that's a big tip that I always say is like, you know, the, the reason why I get the pictures I get is because I know skateboarding. I know timing. Timing is everything in, in shooting any action, right? Mm -hmm. the dunk, you want to know when to shoot the dunk. And if it's a kickflip, you want to know when to shoot the kickflip. So, you know, if you really want to take anything serious, you got to do your homework and look at know your subject, you know, all the way to dancing or ice hockey or even golf. Like mm -hmm. golf, the, the big shot is either before the swing. Right. Or, right. Like, uh, right, right. Contact with the ball sometimes isn't the most coolest. I mean, it can. I think there's no rules in shooting anything. But if you really think about golf, it's this or this, you know, so it's, th those are the things you just want to know 
who you're shooting, what you're, what, what is that situation? I mean, that is the biggest key. If I, I had to say a tip for skateboarding, it's actually know what you want to do. Look at other photos too, and go, this works, that doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. even you earlier, like the photo in the sky, but the photo in the sky, you want to see where they're coming from and going to, you need reference points. A lot of mistakes that first timers do is they just shoot it and crop everything out, the whole skate park and the handrail or whatever, mm -hmm. well, what are they doing? So a real skateboarder would look at that and be like, you know, it'd be like a dunk of someone with no rims. Like, well, are they starting from the, fa the, the, the free throw line or uh -huh. are they right underneath the basket? So there's reference points if you really want to do it right. Nice. Well, you have a second to critique one of my images. It's not a skateboarder, yeah. but it's still at the skate park. They were on the scooter. Um, this is uh, I'm a little fired up now. So let's see. <laughs> let's pull this image up here. All right. This one, I remember hanging out there at the park. It was a bunch of kids and they were just having the best time. I, I could have just sat there for couple hours and just not even pull the camera out just because of the energy these kids had it was just a bit of a simple pleasure of seeing kids outside having fun and just you know just hanging out with each other I, I swear I don't see that very often these days um, but they saw me with the camera and they were polite and it's like sir will you take our picture and I was like yeah I'd love to take your picture you know and so I snapped this one uh, as he came right up the ramp and was going back down. And I said, I hope this comes out okay. You have any thoughts on this? And you can be as brutally well, honest as possible. That's exactly. You know, the timing looks good. I mean, I, I don't shoot scooters and don't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. But the timing looks like he's doing some kind of tail whip where it goes up and around him. Mm -hmm. So your timing actually looks good. Trick-wise, the feet are extended out. Um, it looks sharp. I mean, it, there's like a filter that makes it look like a, yeah, I did put a grunge filter on the top of it. Yeah. I did do so that. It's a little hard to tell, like if your focus is right on point, but uh -huh. you know, artistically that's cool. Um, the only thing that also that I'm saying, seeing is what I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. got the timing right to what as much of scooters as I know, but I can't tell where he's coming from or going to. Right. Right. So right there alone for him, if he did something super special, that was like super long distance, mm -hmm. he's going to, oh, you know, I can't even see what obstacle I'm going. He could be jumping over a fiery pit with alligators and we wouldn't know. Uh, so that's the only thing that I see wrong with that. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for that feedback. That's that's something i can learn yeah, from and hopefully apply you it soon you want to be super close and to fill the frame because in a portrait a lot of times you're not that loose but in this situation i'm like well outstanding oh thank you so much for that so i want to transition this into you know you, you've you've gotten 20 years doing this and you've been you've been shooting friends family from back in the days now to shooting in Tokyo, Japan <laughs> at the Olympics with not only a, a Canon camera, but, but a current Canon flagship camera, the R3. Yep. How was that experience? Cause that camera, okay. You, you have, was it's 24 megapixels, an amazing body that's got the built in battery grip. Uh, it, was it like, 30 frames a second if you shoot in burst mode. I mean, it's ridiculous on the spec yeah, sheet. I, I sent you a link um, to uh, the American skater, uh, Jagger Eaton, who took home bronze for the USA. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a perfect example of that 30 frames per second in a GIF. Yeah. You know, I saw it, that on your Instagram, I believe. <laughs> that it could be video, you know? It's amazing. I mean, that camera, I could talk for a whole another episode of the <laughs> great the Olympics. Um, you know, the eye control was amazing uh, mm -hmm. for quickly moving my autofocus points and, and just the autofocus on that camera is so fast. But that 30 frames per second is an amazing thing in shooting any action. Um, when in doubt, uh, 
spray and pray. And, and that's what you can do because I can pick out the peak moment out of those 30 frames per second. Gotcha. You know? So that's an amazing option to have because with at 30 frames per second, you will not miss one peak second. Mm. So, you know, and especially in skating that it's a millisecond, like it is literally a millisecond difference from that photo being right or wrong. You know, one trick from the time you hit your tail to the time your wheels hit is usually about right at one second. Like the whole trick is happening in a second. So you have to. So not only do you have to have an understanding of the mechanics of a, of a trick, you better be ready and have that exposure set and have that focus set, right? Yeah, everything. And, that, and that's why the, R, the R3 the r was great because I knew I could track, put my point on my subject, mm -hmm. sometimes even using the eye detection. Wow. And using the eye detection with my eye control and just hitting the 30 frames per second and we were good to go. So yeah, it was, it was an amazing opportunity to be at the Olympics, but it was also amazing to have this Canon R3 that wasn't even released yet and be able to pick it up down there and, and use it. So yeah, it was, it was a huge opportunity. Was this your first Olympics? Yeah, this was my first Olympics. Oh, yeah. wow. I got a hunch you'll be back. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just a special um, opportunity to, you know, be there for skateboarding the first time the Olympics happened. And also to, you know, be there representing Canon as an explorer of light. Um, and to be in the one party in 2021, no one could get into, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. actually be at something is like the Olympics is a huge honor, but to be there when no one's allowed to be there and be back in <laughs> Tokyo, you know, all of it was really surreal. That's, that's really the only way I could put it when people ask about how was it? I'm like surreal. Now, one of the, the primary functions of the Canon Explorer of light is the community aspect of its members sharing tips and, and, trying to help educate the photography community with, with, with tips and tricks and things of that nature. Uh, I want to transition into some of your older photographs. They're older, but they're still great. I mean, they're just beautiful shots that I love that I pulled from your website. You mind? We take a couple no, seconds no. to look at those and just no. sort of walk through them. Let me switch my screen here. All right. So this image here, um, uh, the first thing I notice is like, wow, there's a, a hot light on this subject here because there's the yeah. shadow back there. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm presuming this is another one of your famous speed light shots. Uh, yeah, just... yeah. So we use a lot of flashes in shooting skateboarding. Um, right now I'm using the EL1s. I love them. They're great flashes. I was shooting a photo Saturday where, you know, the skateboard hit the flat, the light stand and they fell from about five feet down like three different times and didn't break. So I'm definitely putting them to test. But yes, <laughs> um, I work with lighting um, all the time. It, it, it flashes. I look at the street the same as a studio mm -hmm. and I go in there and I go, where can I put a light? It's going to be out of my frame, but also you know, light up his face, light up the action. Skateboarding is left foot forward or right foot forward. So mm -hmm. you know, want to figure out which side of your subject's going to be facing your flash or his back's going to be to the flash. So, you know, th there's a lot of those things you have to consider. Um, and it's great because the EL1s now are syncing at high speed syncs at two thousandths of a second. Mm. So I'm able to really freeze my action. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So here's another example out and about. Uh, again, thinking about what you said previously, how it, we want to freeze that, sh that shot of them up in the sky, but you clearly have some context with this shot because now I see that there is this lead in line number one straight up to our, to our subject, but we can tell that this is a path for the skater. Um, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, that's just, you know, for me, I just saw that this is actually funny because a lot of people really like this picture and it's nothing hard. He tried. He just is really good and can pop his ollies, which is like jumping really high. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was uh, we were leaving. I was like, do that again. And, you know, I just 
<laughs> 200, you know, probably shot it at 2.8. Situation like this, I'll actually pre-focus because I know exactly where he's going. And, you know, I just shot one frame. I got my timing right. And that was it. You know, it, 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 that's a really basic photo. He says, I just shot one frame. Boom. I got like, it. I a photo anyone with any starter camera kit could go out and get that same thing. I had no like extra lights. I had no extra bells and whistles. It was mm-hmm. just that's the beauty of that. I love that. Now, this is the last one because it, it definitely got my attention. <laughs> I laughed when I saw it because it's an amazing trick here. I, I couldn't do this. I would crush my skull doing this. But he's in the middle of the street. Um, yeah. Can you walk me through this? Uh, are people that blowing horns awesome. at you? or? <laughs> Honestly, the same thing as the last photo. It was just me hanging out with my friends. He does this all the time. And I was like, yo, uh, <laughs> do that again. I knew uh, there, there's a, a, I knew the yellow line perspective was going to look cool. Yeah. So that's why I was like, yo. And normally you wouldn't want any cars, but this is a busy intersection. Mm-hmm. Once I shot, it was like, it actually kind of, not kind of, it fully adds to the chaos of what's going on. You know? It does. It does. I mean, a, a skateboarder doing a handstand going downhill directly in the middle of the street on the center lane. It's, it's The symmetry is beautiful. But then again, the story behind it is even more fascinating. Uh, Like I said, if this were me trying this, my skull would be cracked. There's no way I could pull this off. And shooting that shot, I would have been a little bit nervous just because of the the risk that's that he is at just in this frame. Just that's what he's doing. He's a pro. (laughs) That's no big deal for the pros. No big deal for the pros. Man, well, Mr. Ativa, this has just been a tremendous time sitting down with you. I, I really do appreciate you joining me. I really appreciate you being a part of the awesome Canon Explorer of Light community that yeah. just I, I love that community and follow a lot of the photographers in that community. They're, all of you are just super inspirational with a lot of different fascinating stories that go beyond the world of photography. Um, yeah. That, I mean, the opportunity to be an explorer a lot has been huge. Um, it's been such an honor to be recognized and be with such an elite uh, group of photographers, but also, you know, a, a camera company that, you know, my first Canon that I shot with was in high school, you know, yeah. and, and to continue to see them really, keep pushing technology so far forward and honestly like be so interested in our opinions of the gear and how they can make cameras and equipment better is great because they really do care about making the best thing for photographers so that's something that I want to be a part of. So did you tell them, look, I'm taking these speed lights out here to the streets of L.A. and I'm going oh, to drop them. <laughs> Trust me, when they gave them to me to test, I was like, they're going to get hit. You know, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Is there anything else you'd like to plug? Anything that you're working on that, that you can actually share? And have folks look forward to uh, you know, just I, I'm, I'm just really excited to keep doing more stuff with canon um just keep working with them i am actually trying to get some book stuff my first time doing some book stuff oh, nice. uh in the next year that's really my focus i i just did a collaboration with a, a furniture company modernica that was one of the coolest things to put my photos in fiberglass oh. uh, furniture which was amazing so yeah, that that is been it, and just you know, hopefully um, we can get things a little bit back to normal, so we can be able to shoot and travel a little bit easier. But I feel lucky to have the opportunities I've already had this year. So you know, just uh, still just stay positive and you know, love what I'm doing and just shooting. Outstanding. Or Mr. Jefferson, I hope I can have you back on the show again in the future Pardon. to be able to pick your brain and see what else you got going on in this wonderful world of photography. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. So, folks, that is it for this week's episode. That is 
Man, a lot of just valuable information. What do you expect? This Atiba Jefferson, Canada Explorer of Light. Duh. I hope this has been very helpful for you all. I know I learned something and I, I can't wait to head out to the skate park and, and try these tips out and see if I can step my game up with this skate photography. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. <laughs> Again, if you if this was your first time catching the show, feel free to hit the subscribe button in your podcast application of choice. Or even if you're on our YouTube, you can subscribe there and leave us the likes and comments and all of that good stuff. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to shoot me an email at hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv for any of your comments, questions, feedback, or even image critiques. Because, you know, we do some uh, image critique episodes on this show to help other members in the community uh, learn a bit more about your shot and what, what they could do to help make things even better uh, for their craft. So send those messages over, on over and also give me a follow on social media. I am ant underscore Pruitt on Twitter. I am also ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram. Follow me there. Tag me there with the, some of the images that you've captured. I love seeing the things that you all share with me. It is quite inspiring, especially those of you that have been with the show from day one and just watching your progress in photography. It's been quite amazing. Thank you all for your tremendous support. I really do appreciate it. But until next week, folks, safely create and dominate. And we'll catch you next time. Y'all take care. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. We're just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Thanks.